What work moment made your attitude go from a proud employee to, I'm just here for the paycheck? Story 1. Worked sales in a radio station. We promoted the hell out of this concert coming up, and usually if the numbers reached the goal we had, I would get a bonus for it. Usually a large bonus. We doubled the attendance, easily beating the goal we had, and I received a $10 gift card to Applebee's. Applebee's. Immediately after I got that gift card, I applied for a new job and ended up leaving. When they asked why I was leaving, I decided to be honest and said, when you compensate someone with a $10 gift card to Applebee's for reaching a milestone for a concert, you won't keep many people. The boss makes a dollar, I make a dime. That was a poem from a simpler time. Now his boss makes a thousand while I make a cent, and he's got employees that can't make the rent. When the CEO makes a million and we don't make jack, that's when we riot to take it all back. Now, Mr. Investor, if this seems extreme, I have to remind you, it beats guillotines. Story 2. This happened a few weeks ago. My boss told me to go to one of the project leaders and tell him to stop work at a particular project. So I do that. The project leader goes like, this is ridiculous, this is a $400,000 job. To which I was like, my boss told me to tell you, don't shoot the messenger. So the project lead talks to the operation manager. The operations manager comes up to me while my boss is in the room, goes, did you tell the project leader to stop work at a particular project? I say, yes, I did, why? Because my boss told me to. The operation manager turns to my boss and goes, Did you tell him to tell the project leader to stop work at this job site? My boss says, no, I did not. There were three other people in the room when my boss originally told me to do this, and those same three people were also in the room in that moment, and no one spoke up. There once was a messenger so bold, whose boss had a message to be told. The project leader did protest, and the messenger did his best, until his boss left him out in the cold. Story 3 I was the general manager of a small chain of retail stores. My boss closed all but one store and let every employee go except for me. Normally, we had four employees, not including a manager working at each store. They weren't doing well, and we had to cut down on costs. So I understood, buckled down, and ran an entire store by myself. Not only did he never come up to the only store he owned to check on things, but I wasn't allowed to shut down and leave for lunch breaks, and was too busy to eat there. Then he and his wife started going on these two-week vacations almost every month. She doesn't work. He came back once and told me he had to cut my pay and needed me to take over purchase orders and do inventory on the entire store every Wednesday. That was it for me. I started sending people to a similar store down the road and found a new job. There is now a for sale sign on his building. I hope he reads this. Too long didn't read, my boss put more and more responsibility on my shoulders while cutting my pay and taking elaborate vacations because we were short on funds. Story 4 For seven years, I had a boss who valued the work people did and didn't care how you arrived at the end product. Motivated and innovative employees were recognized and generally received additional responsibility and challenges. Then came the new boss, who was the textbook example of a micromanager and ran the department like it was a 50s assembly line. Watched the amount of time people took breaks, watched the minute people arrived, and the minute they left. Achievements were no longer recognized, and employees were just cogs in a wheel. If there is no incentive to do anything more than the minimum amount of effort, the minimum amount of effort will be done. Story 5. I started working for Radio Shack as a Christmas employee in 1989. When the holiday months were over, they offered me a full-time job, and I took it. For the first four or five months, it was great, and I enjoyed coming to work. Then the manager got fired, and a new manager took over. At first, he was okay, and we got along decently, especially since they had announced that they were going to move the store to a newly built strip mall where we should see a nice uptick in business. Great. The week of the move, I put in a lot of overtime helping get the new store set up, putting up shelves, arranging things, etc. The weekend we moved, the district manager screwed us. He said he was going to rent a big U-Haul truck and get 15 to 20 people to help us. He did nothing and got nobody, so we were on our own. I worked 36 hours straight, went home for 6 hours to sleep, then came back and worked another 12, getting everything moved and set up. The district manager didn't thank me for putting in all those hours and helping, 
He complained that it took so long to do and said we were weak. When I went to turn in my time card, my manager didn't want to pay me for all the overtime. He and the district manager tried to convince me to volunteer those hours. When I demanded to be paid, they told me they might have to let me go because my hours are throwing the store payroll out of whack. I told them if they wanted to fire me for asking to be paid for the hours I worked, it was fine with me so long as they paid me. After a couple of days of arguing, they agreed to pay me. From that moment on, I didn't give a care. I started to realize that they didn't care about me, and I was just here to collect a check. Story 6. I was told by an old manager to begin handing off a project I had been working on for a year. In the last conference call I was scheduled on, I let everyone know about this. I also threw him directly under the bus when I told them it was his decision. He, of course, said, that's not what I said, and I had printed emails in hand when he called me into a meeting with our director and tried to blame me for the ticked-off client. That was the beginning of the end for me there, as that conversation painted a huge target on my back for my manager. He forced me to be on call 24-7 and would threaten to fire me when I asked to come in late after being called in at 2 a.m. every single night. Story 7. Worked as an attorney at a small firm, about 30 attorneys. We had a gigantic case that occupied years of firm time and involved basically every attorney at the firm at some point. Without going into details, we won big time. We won an absolutely huge verdict for our client, and more importantly than that, we actually got paid for it too when the defendant chose not to appeal and agreed to an eight-figure settlement. Our firm took a standard 33% cut. Since we were primarily a defense shop, the firm didn't have a written policy on how to divide large awards from plaintiff's side cases. Even accounting for the lead attorney and partners taking their standard huge cut and associates getting minuscule percentages, Every associate at the firm was looking at a high five-figure or six-figure bonus from the case, depending on seniority. Instead, the senior partners got extra greedy, and so they messed up everyone else. They gave every associate $1,500, and not a penny more. Within six months, every single associate had quit. All told, I'd estimate that they screwed the associates out of well over $2 million in bonuses that any ethical firm would have dispersed. The verdict was a win so grand, the bonus check soon close at hand, but the partners got greedy, their tactics were seedy, now the associates have taken a stand. Story 8. When I was a cashier at Borders, we had to keep a certain percentage of Borders rewards transactions. I was good at my job and was able to get in the high 80s by being a good salesman and convincing them to get it. There was another guy I worked with who kept his percentage up by cheating. He would just swipe a card and put it into people's bags without saying anything about it. Eventually, he got caught and almost fired, but settles on putting him on probation and having a manager watch his transactions closely. Fast forward about a month, and I find out he's getting promoted to work on the floor with all the movies and music. I could not believe they promoted him after all that and looked me over. Someone that was a hard worker that did a really good job and often would have people compliment me to my managers. After that, I stopped caring as much. Still kept my numbers up, but not as high as I used to. Ended up getting fired from there a couple months later because the guy that was covering my shift while I was on vacation was fired, so I had too many unexcused absences. I'm glad that company tanked. Story 9. I was a relatively new manager of a college bookstore. When my assistant manager left to take a job in her field, there were two months to go until the start of textbook rush. My regional asked what he could do to help me make it through, seeing how I was going to be shorthanded. Get me someone experienced from another store, just for a week when things get busy. The next day, he called me back and said, I can't get you anybody. You're not going to be allowed to hire replacements. You'll have to terminate your three temps the day rush ends, and you can't convert any of them to part-time. But that means I'll literally be the only person on staff. It's a small store. Deal with it. Story 10 Previous job, the owner of the company let go of a secretary due to hard times. It's sad, but understandable. He then fires her husband who worked the night shift cleaning crew because I didn't want any retaliation. He took away both sources of income from this family at the height of the recession for no reason other than paranoia. The owner would say, we're family here, sure. Story 11. It was a three-day weekend, Saturday, Sunday, Monday and I was already scheduled to work Sunday and Monday. On Saturday, I got a call from work. They needed my telephonic help with something. 
That didn't require me to go back in. I handled it from home, and it took about 30 minutes. I added 30 minutes to my time card for the work on Saturday, you know, my only day off, and on Tuesday, after his three-day weekend, my boss tells me the Saturday overtime, 30 minutes, was disapproved because I didn't actually come in. So I just stopped answering my company-paid cell phone outside of work hours. Story 12. This burns me up. My boss has told me many times that there's no set arrival or departure time from work, but the general rule is for 10-hour shifts, Monday through Thursday. I've been getting some of the worst sleep of my life. It's getting better, I'm working on it. So I've been coming in around 7.30 or 8 a.m., which is probably 30 to 45 minutes after most people. I'm not missing anything because all anyone ever does for the first hour is fire off emails. If I have an early meeting, I'm never late. I have no problem staying later than anyone else to finish work. All my work gets done before the deadline, every time, and I never reject additional work. What does my boss do? Gripe at me for coming in when I do. Tell me that just because the time clock says I'm clocked in doesn't mean I can bill that time if my computer is still booting up, etc. He's the definition of being penny-wise and pound-foolish. I went from incredibly ambitious to bare minimum effort when I realized how little he valued me since I didn't fit his precise stereotype of what a worker should be, even though I get all my stuff done, and it's quality every time. There once was a boss oh so strict, whose rules made his worker quite ticked. She'd come in at eight, but he'd fuss and berate till her work ethic was royally licked. Story 13. Boss at the department store wanted me to pressure people into buying stuff they didn't need. Old fella came through, needed help with his disconnecting internet. I know my networks, identified from his information that the fault was the ethernet cable between his gateway and wireless AP, sold him a cheap cable. Boss tells me I should have tried to sell him a new router too. The dude was a pensioner, you slimy crit. I quit a few days later. Screw that. I refuse to lie and sell stuff that people don't need. Story 14. When I asked for a big butt fan to be put in our work area to help circulate the air, since we were working in 120 degree temperature with nothing to move the air around, I was told it wasn't in the budget to purchase another fan. Two weeks later, I found out that not only did no one check the budget or put in a request for said fan, we had two sitting in storage gathering dust. 120 degrees? Where do you work? Mordor? One does not simply clock into Mordor. Story 15. When the new guy who relies on me to do his job got promoted, you should never be so good at your job that the company will suffer by not having you in the same position. Story 16. Worked a 12-hour shift, then stayed on an extra hour because it was insanely busy, received no thanks, and was told by management to man up and stay another hour. Needless to say, I didn't. You should have replied, looks like you're the one who needs to man up, because you're about to be a man down. I'm out of here. Story 17. A change of boss. We went from someone positive and inspiring to work for, to adult without vision or concern for employee morale or motivation. Story 18. When the owners and general manager looked at my prostate cancer as a major inconvenience for them. When they complained about my being out for cancer surgery, and I'd been out less than two weeks. When I was back after two weeks wearing a freaking diaper because I was afraid of losing my job because of cancer, then they expected me to be concerned whether they made a profit. Yeah, that's likely. Story 19. When I got told that my colleague and I already get paid too much when we asked for a little extra. We currently are paid minimum wage. Story 20. The moment they hired an outside guy and paid him as much as I get to do all the social media work I'd been doing. This is right after a conversation about how great my work has been, and we had a discussion about an increase in my hourly rate due to the extra work. Needless to say, I stepped away from the social media, and they haven't figured out why it's poop now. Story 21. Both of my mentors. Two ladies who saw potential in me that I didn't and helped me turn my life around. We're fired, packaged out, within a week of each other. Fired by people who had only started a few months before and then themselves quit a few months later. Story 22. When the CEO sneered at me, should I call your mother and tell her you can't do your job? No one had bothered to train me, and I wasn't getting paid. I took my things and left. Never went back. Story 23. 
After seven years of service, going above and beyond my role and paycheck, volunteering countless hours without claiming for them, I asked for two days off for my grandpa's funeral as he lived four hours away and they only gave me one day. I had to leave my grandpa's funeral during the service to get back home in time to go to work the next day and the last time I ever saw my grandma was at my grandpa's funeral. She passed away a few months later. After that, I couldn't wait to get out of there. Story 24. The company cut out a whole department and transferred their duties to my department. Now we must do two people's jobs for a 52 cent an hour raise, and the strict no overtime policy remains. Fast forward three months, and the company flies all the managers, over 3,000 of them, from across the U.S. to Florida for a meeting where they rent out an amusement park and have a concert by a well-known artist. Needless to say, I'm now the saltiest of salty employees. Story 25. I come in on time or early every day, stay till the end of my shift or later if need be, pick up the pace when it's busy. Then I started to notice that everyone else shows up over 10 minutes late consistently and no one questions it. They usually leave 5 or 10 minutes early and keep at one slow pace all day long. There's also nowhere to move up in the company. Everyone gets the same pay raise every year and no good deed gets acknowledged. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.